So now if we hear up to 20,000 cycles per second, and this piano only goes up to 4,186, which means all of the instruments of the orchestra pretty much end right here. That's pretty high. But what is all this stuff above that that we hear? 10,000 cycles. What's that? 20,000. Overtones. Harmonics. They are harmonics. The overtones happen for every single sound that happens. You know, that's got overtones. We just can't necessarily hear it that way. And there's only one sound that does not have overtones, and that's the sine wave. Sine wave. They created the sine wave not to have overtones. Because you know, when they started with the electronic components, they had to find a way to test the circuits. So if they're going to test an audio circuit for low frequencies for 100 cycles, they can't have 200, 300, 400, 500, all the overtones in there, or they couldn't get an absolute reading of the circuit. They have to have only 100 cycles. So they created sine waves so that they could just have a specific frequency. They could have just 1,000 cycles, no overtones, just 600 cycles, no overtones, whatever. Let's go back to explaining the overtones, because these overtones end up being very important to the sound, because it, it happens in a strict formula. As I said, the sine wave doesn't have overtones, but every other sound does. Even this has overtones. Even this. You know. And the formula is this. If I play this C, let's just say this is the note I'm playing. In reality, what we're hearing, we're not only hearing that. We're hearing this. And more. Every time we hear that note. And what it is, is it's octave, fifth, octave again, third, fifth, out of tune, flatted seventh, octave again, the ninth, tenth, up to the sharp eleven. It's a strict formula. And if I was to play that chord in one place, it would be something like, uh, something like that. It's a nice chord. But it is what happens every time you hear a sound. And, and here's how I'll have to prove it to you. Okay, now listen to this sound. And now listen to this within it. Okay? You hear it? Listen close. You hear it in there? Okay, now listen to this one. Hear it? It creeps in. It takes a moment to creep in because it takes a moment for overtones to develop in air. Okay, now listen to this sound. Okay, all I'm doing is I'm holding the string down here and, you know, releasing the, the stop off it so that this excites it. Now, if I did this, and that C sharp, I'm holding that string down. It's not going to excite that. It's not a part of the overtone series of that string. The string does this. The string vibrates at 100 cycles per second. Let's just say we got 100 cycle. This is 100 cycles. Okay, so this is going to make that pitch at 100 cycles per second. Then it cuts itself in half, which doubles the frequency up to the octave. Now it's 200 cycles a second. These two. And then that cuts itself in half again. It's 300 cycles. 400 cycles. Each overtone is the amount of the fundamentals apart. So if I have uh, 27.5, the next overtone is going to be 55. Right? Okay. Let me get up a little higher so we can hear it. So I have... Um, 110. The next overtone is going to be 220, correct? Now the fifth is going to be 220 plus 110 is 330. And then it's 440. 
Then it's 440 plus uh, 110. Uh, 550. Right? Do you understand? So every overtone is the amount of the fundamental apart. It, it, it takes a little longer than that for it to develop, but it does have to have a moment for the overtones to develop. If I had this, and I also played this, I just changed the texture of the sound. Here's the note, and now I'm playing it's uh, on this fourth overtone. So I'm boosting the volume of the fourth overtone. Look what it did to the sound. It changed the whole sound. So now when you go to your numbers on your equalizers, and you turn those knobs, you're affecting the overtones. You are readjusting the order of the overtones and their volume. So that's how you change the texture. Make sense? Works.